or am I? We'll see. But anyways, yeah. So Father, we just come before you today. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for how it enriches our life. God builds us up. God shows us how to live, brings us closer to your heart. And God, that's what we always want. So God, as always, we hold our Bible above our heads, saying that your ways, thoughts, and words are higher than all of ours. And we submit ourselves to the, the foundation of the truth of your word. And we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the last couple of weeks before last, we've kind of been going on a little journey with similar themes. We talked about intercession into walking in the prophetic and then speaking in tongues. And then Teresa went last week, did an amazing job on bringing unity, uh, talking about unity into the church and really applauding our church for that culture that we have here, which I'm so blessed by as well. Tonight, I felt I wanted to jump into fasting. Let's talk about fasting how important it is uh, related to our, our walk, our Christian walk today, because I believe it's very uh, necessary. And so what is, we know what fasting is, but let's just state the obvious uh, at the beginning. What is fasting in a nutshell? Right? Fasting is, biblically, is taking away food for a certain amount of time that you are before the Lord for a variety of reasons. Now fasting to me has always been something very interesting, uh, because you see the, the physical fast where there's the, the takeaway of food, and we're going to cover one of these verses in here in a second. But then you hear that, that different kind of fast that the Lord says, this is, the fast I, this is the fast I want from you. And he goes into the action that is a type of fast that the Lord talks about. We're going to be going into there. But before I, I jump into that, I think fasting something, the more I've studied it, the more it's... it's uh, I want, to, I want to word it right because I don't want to come across wrong, but I, th I think it's been downplayed a little bit in the church. Now, I understand that not everyone can fast a complete fast due to dietary reasons, and some people need to eat food, and I get that. I'm not calling anyone to, to put your health at risk or play Russian roulette with your health over a fast, but quite often, instead of pulling away food, we'll pull away something that our body doesn't really need. See, the thing about fasting is you pull away food. Food is something your body needs. It's energy to your body. Your body needs it and requires it. It's not the same as if someone says, it's much harder to fast food, to fast food, than it is to, uh, uh, you know, fast a coffee or fast sugar or fast a, a TV show or something like that because your body doesn't require it that same way. And so there's that thing where you pull away what your body needs and you say, Lord, for this time, I'm going to pull away something that my physical body needs and I'm going to spiritually eat and fill myself spiritually while my body is letting me know my weakness and my frailty. Because I don't know, I mean, especially me, if I don't go two meals, I'm starving. It's emergency, right? So it's, but my body feels it, let alone go three or four days. And by the time day three hits, your body's screaming at you, really letting you know, hey, you got to eat something or something bad's going to happen, right? But, and that's the whole point. And in that place of weakness, you rely on the, on the Lord for a different type of nutrition that's going to come into you, that, that spiritual nutrition that we should all be longing for. And that's kind of it. And so I always feel when someone says, which is, Again, my opinion, and I'm not saying this in a judgmental way, but I feel it's the easy way out to say, hey, fast a, a cup of coffee a day or fast a sugar thing or fast whatever, fast a TV show because your body doesn't need it. To me, that's more of a discipline issue than it really is. I mean, is it going to be healthy for you to fast sugar? Absolutely, right? But that's, um, that, that, that's a discipline uh, issue. And sometimes I've been in places where uh, that fasts seem to be called shortly after big meals, and uh, which is great. I mean, we can get to that too, but, you know, well, let's just jump into it. So I'm going to be going over a whole bunch of different reasons on why we can fast. But one thing, too, I want to kind of talk about, and just to shed truth, right, because we, we want to know truth, and, and for some, just say some with dietary issues that can't do a full fast, that can't pull back from food. You know, you've heard someone say the Daniel fast, which, or whatever you want to eat, Let's kind of go into the Daniel fast. And have, has anyone ever heard of a Daniel fast? Right? So I've heard of a Daniel fast. Do you know that a Daniel fast isn't really a fast? I don't know where that kind of came from. And I want to open up that Bible and just kind of shed truth on that for a second. And just go before we go into fasting. So we've had this thing in the church where someone's like, if you can't fast food, or if you don't want to fast food, you can do a, a Daniel fast, which is fruits and veggies. Let's go to, first, let's go to Daniel 1.8 and talk about that just for a second. 
Because I believe that we can't pull away, as you turn, if you want to turn, I'll read it in a second, Daniel 1.8. We can't pull away from the truth of fasting. And fasting is not supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be, it's like different. It's not like coming before the Lord at the altar and having a great time of worship. You know, it's, it's a different, different feel, different look, different vibe. It's not one of the fun parts. It's literally letting your body tell you, hey, I'm getting weak here and you're getting strong somewhere else. In a nutshell, under there's facets to it, which we'll talk about here in a second. But if you go to Daniel 1.8, it says, uh, now Daniel was supposed to eat certain types of food that he thought were going to defile him. And so let's jump into it right here. Now Daniel resolved, 1.8, that he would not defile himself with the fine food of the king and with the wine that he drank. So he requested of the commander of the court officials permission so that he would not defile himself. Right, and he, what did he request? He requests, let me eat the vegetables, and I'll prove to you that after this certain amount of time that I'm going to be even, I'm still going to be healthy. Don't worry about me not being able to perform my duties. I'll be good. As we know, the Lord blessed him, right, and his, and his buddies. And what happened, they were actually more healthy. They looked more vibrant. They looked more uh, ready to go, just eating the fruits and veggies. Now, for there, you're running into dietary issues with Daniel, because what was the motive of him not wanting to eat the king's food? Verse 8, he set in his heart that he would not defile himself, right? So we don't know uh, how the food was prepared. We don't know the type of food, if it possibly came in contact with something that was dead or impure, which wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to eat that because of the dietary rules of of Israel at that time. Uh, If it was food that was sacrificed to idols. But we clearly know that this was to avoid defilement. It wasn't a type of fast, Right? And so that's kind of come in there, the church, I think, kind of as a substitute for those who legitimately can't go without food for long periods of time. Uh, but before I even go into that, one of the testimonies of Adam, remember when Adam was preaching this past Sunday, if you didn't hear it, remember how he was making reference to one of his coworkers, his machinist, that was very sick with COVID? Um, Adam before, Adam, hope you don't mind me sharing this, give me a thumbs up, yeah, uh, had always worried about fasting, saying, I don't know if I could pull off a fast, because he's always on his feet. If you've been at Adam's shop, he's standing all the time, running around on the computer, lots of things going on. He said, I don't know if I could physically do that with the headaches and everything that you get when you, and still be able to function at work. So he would do not fasts and different things like that to try and get, get before the Lord. But long and behold, when his machinist needed a miracle, Adam dropped it all. What happened, Adam? Three or four days later, what did you find? He... He could do it. It's tough, but he could do it. And let's just jump into that now. So let's talk about reasons to fast, okay? And we'll go to different scriptures. I think, and there's probably more than what I'm going to talk about, but let's talk about main ones, what you want to fast. So let's say, point number one, preparation for what God is calling you into or dedication to God. A verse for that is Luke 4, um, 1 to, we don't have to read it all. 1 to 15 is the portion of scripture, but I'm going to read 1 to 2. So reasons to fast, number one, a point, not in particular order, not in order of importance, just point number one. Preparation for what God is calling calling you into, dedication to the Lord. And this part in Luke 4, 1 to 15, we all know it is when Jesus goes into the desert, right? Right before he gets baptized, one of my favorite verses, it says he goes into the desert full of the Holy Spirit, right? He's tempted by the devil for 40 days. And what does it say at the end of that portion of scripture? That he leaves the desert, do you remember, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So something happened to him in that place. He was just about to start his ministry. He goes into the desert for 40 days to dedicate himself for the Lord, Right To prepare himself, Lord, I know my time has come. I've been baptized. The Holy Spirit fell from heaven. The Lord announced from heaven, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Now it's time to come into the desert and dedicate and, and prepare myself for the calling that God has upon my life. So a time that, well, let's just read the verse. Uh, one, one, and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were complete, he was hungry. I would have been hungry a whole lot earlier than he was, but uh, so that's what he did. He went to the Jordan, left from the Jordan into the desert, because he wanted to have a time of, of, of dedicating himself to the task that was ahead. You know, we don't have to fast every single time that happens, but if you ever feel that the Lord is calling you into a season 
of ministry and, and you know what's on the forefront and you're like, hey, Lord, I, I want to dedicate myself to this. I want to, I want to uh, prepare myself for what you're calling me, for what I'm stepping into. That would be a good time to fast. Get before the Lord. If you even, It doesn't always have to be spiritual because marketplace is a ministry, right? So if you're working at a, at a secular job, that is a ministry because you can have God encounters with people. It doesn't have to be in a church setting. It can be anywhere. So you can take some time aside and you can say, Lord, I'm going to come before you. And here I am. Right? Dedicate yourself to the Lord. Uh, have we ever felt the Lord is preparing us, right, for a time, a time of season that we're going into that we felt the Lord has called us into? That would be a good time to say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready for you. And that fasting was good. And, and whatever happened in that time of Jesus preparing himself in the desert for 40 days, something happened where the Holy Spirit came upon him in power. Right? Luke 4, he went in full of the Spirit, came out in the power of the Spirit. And so in that same time, if we want to be clothed with power from on high, and that we, I can take it to another point, there, there's a time that you can fast before the Lord and drain yourself out of that physical need and say, Lord, I'm focusing on the spiritual. I'm going to go that way. Another point, which is linked to this exact same verse, uh, point number two, you fast to overcome temptation. Right? It specifically says that the Lord was, Jesus went into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. Right? We know these stories well. We don't need to go into them. So Jesus goes in there uh, to overcome temptation. He's relying on a spiritual food that is going to be imparted into his system for 40 days. That when that temptation comes, he's going to be able to step over it and rise victorious. How do we know it's also important? Because what does he say to Peter in the garden further on, right? He tells Peter to pray with him. Remember when he's sweating blood and he comes back and finds Peter asleep and what does he say to him? Can't you pray with me for one hour? He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, right? And so that time of dedicated prayer fills and strengthens your spirit and brings strength to your body so when, when, when your flesh, when the weak, so the weakness of your flesh will not overcome and override. Right, so I believe that's another time. If there's, if there's areas where you're, you're overcoming or stuck in a, a cycle that you're going around and around and around. When we first got married, there's, there's things that I was a little rough around the edges. Rachel can confirm that uh, there's just things that I want out of my life. And I was like, I need them gone. There's multiple things. And so I would literally go before the Lord. One specifically, I said, I'm not leaving this place until I feel I'm delivered. You know, and it was a time of that where I, I can relate to that. And I went before the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm chasing you here. I need freedom. I need strength to my body. And I never, that particular one was to deal with anger because I would flip out. And I've never, I mean, I've, of course, I've gotten upset. But I've never flipped out the way I had since that point. Another, another point, we're going to go into another verse, Luke 2. We can go two chapters before. We can fast as an act of worship to increase relationship. Now, Luke 2, 36 to 37. At least I think, well, it's with Anna. I think it's 36, my, my numbers. Yeah, yeah, 36 to 38, I think it is. Luke 2, 36 to 38. And this can also go along with intercession that we talked about at the very beginning of this kind of, I guess it was a study, but let's read it. A prophetess named Anna was also in the temple that day. This is when Jesus was there, right? Pouring out love to Oh, oh, sorry, was in the temple that day. She was from the tribe of Asher and the daughter of uh, Phanuel. Anna was an aged widow who had been married only seven years before her husband passed away. After he died, she chose to worship God in the temple continually. For the past 84 years, she had been serving God with night and day prayer and fasting. You see that there? I think that's in 38. Night and day prayer and fasting. So after her husband died, she chose, I love that, it says she chose to worship the Lord. And so she was called as an intercessor there. She was a prophet. Of course she was a prophet because if you and I have been serving for 84 years in the temple, prayer and fasting every single day and night, do you think we'd be hearing from the Lord? Yeah, so of course she was a prophet. She was getting words imparted to her and she was speaking them. Right, but that was, a, that was a thing. So prayer and fasting came there because I believe that when she was in the temple, she was obviously worshiping the Lord, but while she was in there, she was probably praying for Israel. She was probably lifting up her country, right? Lifting up her people. 
asking God for freedom, whatever, whatever it was. And so I believe that that, was, that would have been an intercessory type prayer. And she was in that place for, for, for fasting. But also, I love that she chose to worship the Lord. So it was coming from a place of worship. So we can take separated times where we want to come before the Lord and say, Lord, this is just a time where I'm coming in a way for you, to you just to worship you. I'm going to fast and empty myself up and eat spiritual food with you for these days. We can think of it in terms of marriage, right? Everyone can celebrate a, an anniversary and take special time aside and go before the Lord. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't be an anniversary, but we should go before the Lord in, in, in that same heart, wanting to celebrate the relationship and celebrate who God is to us. You can fast in those times as well. And then, oh yeah, sorry. And then in verse 38, when, when Jesus came into the temple, what was she easily easily able to do identify the messiah boom she saw it pray 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 her eyes are fixed and she identifies the christ wow amazing from all that prayer and fasting another point number four that you can fast you can fast have a lifestyle fasting to impart authority Now, this kind of goes on to what we were talking about earlier. I guess it can be a point 1A, but it's point 4. When Jesus went into the desert and returned in the power of the Spirit, the verse for this is Mark 9, 29. And you've probably heard me preach this verse three or four times in the last year and a half. This is when the disciples could not cast out the, the Spirit, the demon, right? And then Jesus comes and casts out the demon. The disciples, being a little confused at why they did not walk in power, came to Jesus later and said, hey... Why couldn't we cast him out? Right? And so Jesus replies to them, Mark 9, 29. He answered them and said, This type of powerful spirit can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. Now, you know there's a lot of there's probably a bunch of footnotes that are in your Bible right there. So I want to go over a couple of them. Many reliable Greek texts from Mark 9, 29 leave out fasting. So in the Greek. Reliable texts will say this type only comes out by prayer, right? So, but in the Aramaic for Mark, it's included, it's, it's included, prayer and fasting. You go down to the same story in Matthew 17, 21. It's the same story uh, where Jesus says this type only comes out with prayer and fasting. Uh, many Greek, uh, reliable Greek manuscripts for Matthew 17, 21, don't include that whole portion, prayer and fasting. So that part's completely out. But again, it's in the Aramaic and Hebrew. Uh, uh, Matthew is a book that has its own Hebrew version written of it as well. And it's in the Hebrew, prayer and fasting in the Aramaic. So for me, I'm going to take that personally. I've chosen to take that as, I think that's what was meant to say, prayer and fasting. It's in the Aramaic, it's in the Hebrew, it's in uh, Greek manuscripts. It's in, and then even within the Greek manuscripts between the stories of Mark and Matthew, it's divided, right, of what's included. So uh, for me, I take that verse as it's written. This type only comes out with prayer and fasting. And so that is a type of two. That, that's a type because Jesus obviously walked in some kind of power, right? Jesus wasn't many times in ministry. It always just doesn't say right away that he was fasting. But we know there's times he did not eat. We, we just know it. He would go up, take nothing with him, it would say, and go up on the mountain to pray. Uh, even that time we know at the woman uh, at the well, he tells his disciples, you know, everyone was hungry, they went to eat, and he said, I've already eaten. And they're like, who, who fed you, right? And the chosen, it kind of makes it funny because John's really trying to figure out who gave him food to eat, and he's not getting it in, the, in, the, in that TV show, The Chosen. But, but something happens, and I believe that's true. When you go before the Lord like Jesus did, let's just use that desert experience, and you're fasting and praying of the Lord and allowing the strength of the Lord to arise in you as your body's feeling weak, something has to happen there. And I do believe, and, and, and I'm, cause I'll be honest with you, I do not like fasting. I, I hate the feeling of being hungry. I just do not like it. You get headaches, you're weak, you're exhausted, you're tired. I don't like it. But when I feel that way, I'm like, Lord, this is exactly why you've called us to fast right here. To rise victorious when my body feels weak. And so we know that from there. And then 
So Jesus, right, this type only comes out by prayer and fasting, Jesus says. And what was the result of that? He lays hands, right? The Spirit leaves the boy. And this is to fulfill Scripture from Isaiah 58, 4 to 7, when it says, Look, you fast to quarrel in, in strife and to strike with a wicked fist. You shall not fast as you do today to make your voice heard on high. Is this the fast I chose like this, a day for mankind to humiliate himself? to bow his head like a reed, and to make his bed on sackcloth and ashes? You call this a fast, a day of pleasure for Yahweh? Is this not the fast I choose? To release the bonds of injustice, to untie the ropes of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free and tear every yoke to pieces. Is it not to break your bread for the hungry? You must bring Home the poor, the homeless. When you see the naked, you must cover them. You must, not, you must not hide yourself from your relatives. So Jesus says, is this not the fast I've chosen for you? Right? Lord said, I don't want you to throw your, your voices on high to be heard when you're going to oppress people. Right? And he was, there was oppression there that was going on in Israel that he really wanted to be set free. But hell, could that be the same thing of us in the church today? Do you really think this is the fast I've chosen when you have unforgiveness in your hearts, when you got bitterness towards someone else, when you're judging someone else? That's not what God's called us to, right? And so we can see there's a place for a physical fast where you withhold food, but we know that the end result, the fast that God has chosen is to loose the cords of the oppressed. What did Jesus do to that boy? He was oppressed by the devil, and Jesus came and loosed and brought freedom to him. Right? It's a beautiful picture. Jesus fed the hungry, right? And who knows, we'll know eventually when we get to the libraries of heaven and just have a fun time reading there all the accounts of what Jesus did while he was on earth, the stuff that we don't know about. It's going to be amazing. It's going to, whew, but anyways. Physically, God wanted this done, and he did it. Another reason for fasting, they would repent and humble themselves before the land. We don't really need to go into that. That's an obvious one, right? When they wanted to repent, uh, if you want scripture references, you can write it down. 1 Samuel 7, 6, 1 Samuel 7, 6, and 1 Kings 21, 27 to 29. Those are examples that they would fast uh, to repent and to humble themselves before the Lord. Another reason you can fast which again kind of ties into that first point, is to seek guidance. Let's turn to Judges 20, 26 to 28. And all the Israelites and all the troops went up and came to Bethel and wept. And they sat there before Yahweh and fasted on that day until evening. And they offered burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before Yahweh. And the Israelites inquired of Yahweh, and there it goes into it, saying, should we go out once more to battle against the descendants of Benjamin, our relatives, or should we stop? And Yahweh said, go up tomorrow, I will give them into your land. Now this is a story where Israel had been fighting, and they kind of got beat up a little bit, and so they're trying to figure out, is this a fight the Lord wants us to take? Right? And so that's why they ask him, should we go out once more, verse 28, and battle? And the Lord says, yes. So they went there when things weren't seeming quite right. They put a pause button on it. So let's back up a little bit and let's fast and pray and ask the Lord for guidance. That's what should we do? What should we do? And what was the result in that asking for guidance? The Lord answered them. He said, don't worry. Get up tomorrow. I will give them into your hand. Point six for fasting is deliverance. Right? Seeking deliverance. Second Chronicles 21 to 4. So this part right here is another war story. Uh, came, Jehoshaphat was going for war and he was surrounded. A great multitude from beyond the sea was there coming against him. Right? And it says, Jehoshaphat was afraid, verse 3. Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek Yahweh. And he called for a fast throughout Judah. And Judah assembled to seek after Yahweh. Even from all the cities of Judah, people came to seek Yahweh. So here he is, this great multitude from beyond the sea has come to fight him. He's scared. I can't win this fight. Lord, I need your help. I need deliverance. And not only that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call a fast 
and say, hey, let's fast before the Lord together, right, and come before the Lord. There's areas in our lives that we need that touch of the Lord. Rachel and I, my fasts are not, I've never done a 40-day fast, right, and we're not supposed to tell. We know from Scripture the obvious, Matthew, I think it's seven, uh, eight or seven, that we're not supposed to let people know, right, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fasting today, you know. It's, it's not about that. But when we do fast, I fasted for many reasons. I fasted for people's health. I fasted because I felt overwhelmed. I fasted just simply because I felt the Lord wanted me to. I fasted for deliverance because I needed, I needed uh, to, to be free from something. And I've tried to fast more just because I feel it's something that's on the Lord's heart. But remember, when the Lord asks you to do something, like let's just use fasting for an example. Or any any what we what the what we would call rule put in place, is the Lord trying to take something away from you? No. Every time the Lord asks you to do something, you grow in that action, in that obedience. And so, if fasting is something the Lord asks me to. Well, you'll take away. Yeah, you'll take away stuff from you that you don't want. But every single time that the Lord is asking you to come into a fast, I believe that you can come before that time. And it's better for my benefit that I fast than I don't. So I try to get in the habit now of just stepping up that game and saying, Lord, I just want to worship you like Anna. I just want to come before you and worship you and release a fast unto you. Because I want to start walking in that authority. And if Jesus really says, and that's something that's been convicted in my heart. Let's go back to point four. If there's only some types of healings and deliverances that we'll see through prayer and fasting, and I don't fast, how can I step on the battlefield and expect to see a victory? Right? And I, I don't want to be in that place, and, and I want to be in that place where I'm ready. And I believe that fasting can get us ready for some of those unexpected things that we don't see coming, but when they come, we'll have been strengthened in the Lord and been eating a feast with God, a spiritual feast that comes from his word, that comes from his rhema, comes from the God encounter, and we're ready to handle that. Two more points. Point eight, to show grief. Do you fast to show grief? Uh, we know this. We don't have to go into deep scripture. We know this. Uh, Nehemiah did this when he heard that uh, Jerusalem's walls were down. He was overcome with grief and he fasted. Another story in scripture. We know this from David. Remember when David and Bathsheba, Bathsheba had their first son and the, the firstborn son dies. What does David do? He goes and fasts before the Lord. He grieves him for that certain time and, uh, and then washes himself and, and anoints himself and, and gets back. And the last point, let's turn to Acts 19. There's a fast that goes on when praying for others and releasing and committing them to the Lord. Now, this is a, an important part. We can do this. First, let's read the scripture and then let's talk about it. Acts 14.23. Paul and Barnabas ordained leaders, known as elders, from among the congregations in every church that they visited. After prayer and fasting, they publicly committed them into the care and protection of the Lord of their faith. Right, that's a great thing to do when you're, something that we should probably do more here that I'm even thinking about that I haven't done when you've, People have stepped into ministry with you as, as leaders. We should be praying and fasting and commit them to the Lord, commit them to, to what he wants to do. And I just found this verse recently, which is why I have not had a habit of it. But before they publicly committed to them, they would pray and fast and release them to the Lord and in the care and protection of the Lord, their faith. They did this for ministries. But can we not also do this for our children, right, for for. Uh, whoever, friends, whenever we're helping someone step into something, our grandchildren, our children, our, our, our brothers, our sisters, our parents, uh, people that are going to be stepping into ministry, various roles, right? We should be prayer, praying and fasting and just releasing. It doesn't say how long it had to be, right? Just, be, just a time of, of, of saying, Lord, we want to be ready for this moment. There's probably plenty more reasons to fast in Scripture. Those are just the nine that I, I, I found there. Uh, you know, again, preparation for what God is calling you into, dedication to God is one. Uh, to overcome temptation is two. In our weakness, believe that God will impart strength. Uh, as a three is to, uh, to, as an act of worship to increase our relationship with the Lord. Four is to impart a lifestyle of imparting authority. Five was be to repent and humble before the Lord. Six to seek guidance. Seven for deliverance. 
8, to show grief, and 9, praying for others and releasing and committing them to the Lord. And sometimes, too, I try to make fasting sporadic. It doesn't have to be. There's not, I think, a, a certain method when it comes down to this, but you never want to get into routine, right? Routine with the Lord can be dangerous because even though it comes from a good place, if you keep on doing a routine, then nothing changes. And when the Lord's calling you to shift right or shift, shift left or shift right, you're not able to do it because this is what we do, right? And, and a lot of times I've been a part of people that fast at the same time every single year, and that's great. I mean, I'm not downing that. My only time is, if that's the only time you fast, how do you know the Lord's not calling you to fast at a different time? Right? We should always have these, which we do, open and saying, Lord, what do you want from me? That's something that I've been praying through. You've heard me reference uh, a, a prayer meeting that we do with Adam's guys. What's the Lord speaking to you? All I know is, is that the Lord has been calling me into a season where he just want, I feel like he just wants me to be aware to pick up the little things that he's speaking. And I got to make sure, as, especially as a leader, I mean, this is, I'm so thankful to be here in this position where I'm at today. And I know it's come from the Lord. I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful for everything that I've been at. But I want to make sure that, that when my time comes to pass this baton, that I, that I can say before the Lord, like, I, I did everything to the best of my ability. I heard you. I sought you. I was ready for the unexpected. I, you know, and, and I believe that prayer and fasting can get us into that place and can get us ready. So as a church, I've always shied away from it. I would, I would not want to do it unless I really felt the Lord come to me in a dream. But I know some churches call full church-wide fasts, and if there comes a time, we might have one. But I would encourage you to really pray into some of these things and ask the Lord, Lord, is fasting something you want to me to pick up on. And again, I know some of them, some of us here could legitimately have dietary restrictions to that. And I understand that. And so you ask the Lord and just say, Lord, how do you want me to fast? Right? Let him tell you, let him show you. Have, there's that place of relationship where you can pull back and just eat the things that can, are nutritious for you. I'm not saying hurt yourself. No, again, do not hurt yourself. But if you can hold it, you could be surprised like Adam was, surprised like I was. You know, once you get past day three, it gets a whole lot easier. But, uh, but whew, it's, uh, it's rough. But, but really seek before the Lord, but pray into these things. Because I believe as a church, and we know it, that, that we're coming into some uh, amazing times. And I believe that with all my heart. But I want to be ready. And I believe that one of those ways to be ready for the unexpected is to have a lifestyle of fasting where the Lord builds you up spiritually. And where his strength overpowers your, the strength of your flesh, which can only take you so far, right? Pray, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, is what Jesus said, right? And when we get into that place where things can happen, we'll start seeing more and more miracles, more and more breakthroughs, more and more deliverances, just because the strength of the Lord is working through us. And that's where it's going to come. So... I'm going to end there tonight because I know we have a, a board meeting a little later. Now, this isn't the church. No one's ever got, done this to me, so I'm not, if anyone's watching. But Alan joked around saying that if I tend to go long-winded tonight, he was going to stick my notes down in the abyss. And I said, but he would not do that. He was just joking around. But uh, let's, let's close in prayer. But, but please pray with me on that because that's something that's really been on my heart. And maybe we'll do it as a church one time in the, the way that we can. But remember, there's parts, that this is a discipline where the Lord is saying, hey, I want to build you. I want you to feast with me. And just think of those words that Jesus said over, you know, when the disciples said, hey, who gave you food? You didn't have it. And Jesus said, I've already eaten food. My food is to do the will of my Father, right? And sometimes if the will of this Father is for us to fast here and there, let's do it, right? Let's eat something. Let's build ourselves up from the inside out. Let's feed our spirit man. Let's take some time where we focus solely on our spirit man, spirit to spirit with God, and watch what he'll do. And I believe there'll be breakthrough. I know I don't want to tell other people's stories, but there's some other people in our congregation that have been contending for things in their own life, and they've said, hey, I feel like I need to fast until there's breakthrough. And people feel called to that. And breakthrough comes, right? It's, it's, it's an interesting tool that I, I think has been pulled back a little bit, partially because it's just not fun. It stinks. <laughs> it's hungry. I like food. And then usually, when you're fasting, that's when someone makes the best meal ever, and they're like, hey, do you want to go out for lunch? We're going to go to Fat Daddy's today. And you're like, oh, no. Right? 
or Wilma brings those desserts in, that fudge. I, that one time I had to slightly duck away from that one. But uh, anyways, right? But let's just think about it. Let's pray about it. So God,